Next time we'll bring a, a little, we'll show you this. This lower left hand is an animation that was captured inside of the rendering space. And basically this does a fly around. So it comes down around the car as a video. It swings all the way around. It actually kind of goes up over the wing and back through and between the lower wing. And so in addition to the straight up just photo rendering, you can do a rendered animation that ends up looking really nice. And I didn't get the movie copied over for that thing. Okay, so what are the challenges? Well, one of the challenges that we need to kind of think about and talk about a little bit is this notion of taking a 3D image and somehow seeing it appropriately on a 2D window or a 2D plane, 2D display. So that's one thing that we need to kind of think about. Another thing is photorealistic rendering of CAD data. How is that done? Well, it's done in a few steps. You have to first create an environment that you're going to be working in. The next thing that you have to do is you have to light that environment. What's that? Lighting can be kind of hard. Sometimes. Lighting is really tough. Okay. But it can make it look really nice. But it will make it look really nice. And the thing that you ought to be thinking about is if you've ever gone into a photo studio for your own pictures, you need to think about what kind of lighting they use to light their scene. If they're using spots, if they're using floodlights, if they're using, if it's outside, you've got a lot of, you know, sunlight, but they still bring in additional lights to cast shadows or to make shadows. So lighting is something else that you need to think about. You need to think about coloring your data. So instead of using just the default kind of ugly color of the CAD system, you need to go in there and say, well, what color should I put on this? You know, put a material property. You need to think about mapping textures onto it, okay? Is this gonna be a really smooth surface? Is it, should it look like a cast surface? Something that has come out of a sand casting, you know? And so there's, there's texture that you have to deal with. You have, also have to deal with refraction. Okay, where are you gonna try and deal with refraction? The windows. So you can, you can say, I want the light to go through the window and light the inside of the car. As in some of those images, you saw the motor kind of sitting in there or the drivetrain sitting in there. If you want to deal with that, you need to make sure that you set up, this is a glass surface. This is another glass surface. This is a translucent surface. You need to think about handling reflections. Right? Um, very seldom will you ever see a scene that does not have some kind of, you know, shadow, some kind of reflection, and in addition to that, someplace shadows. Okay. Right? So those are the things that we're going to try and talk about or deal with in this discussion. You also need to think about, do you want lines kind of showing through? So some of the CAD systems allow you to kind of do, you can cut in and see the inside and you can show that as kind of a wire frame. Okay. Do you want to render it as an orthographic view? Do you want to render it as some kind of a perspective or some kind of isometric? If you just render it as a straight up isometric, is that going to be very realistic? Now you're gonna to wanna to click on the perspective button because generally everything in the world is kind of in a perspective, is in perspective to us. Okay. 
Another thing that the CAD system has to worry about when it's doing rendering is what's referred to as clipping. Uh, when I was first dealing with rendered images on CAD systems, you would hit the render button and you would literally wait for hours while it rendered the scene. Most of those minutes that you were waiting, okay, you saw absolutely nothing happening on the display. And it's because it was off rendering stuff that was off of view. But it didn't know any better. And so to improve that, they've developed the ability to clip away anything that is outside of the view and not render it. Only render the stuff inside of the display window. They also have to deal with silhouette lines, which are the edge lines in perspective or in um, an isometric view. Another thing that they didn't used to allow is they didn't used to allow you to zoom in on a rendered scene. Now we can pretty much render the scene and actually move into it. If it's the highest resolution, if it's like a radiosity image, uh, then you typically can't zoom in on it. Okay? At least not in the CAD system. You can kind of capture it and then move closer in paint or, or in Photoshop. <clears throat> same with panning, same with rotating. Those things all used to not be part of a rendered image. But now, especially when we just do a flat image, all of that is very functional and very easy to do. So let's talk about one technique like we did in talking about our curves. We talked about the Bezier curves and the Bezier surfaces. Let's talk about one rendering technique called ray tracing. If we understand this technique, it is the basis for all of the other rendering methods and routines that your textbook talks about. Your textbook will talk about Fong rendering, about radiosity, about a number of different styles of rendering, and they all have at the, at the underlying mathematical foundation ray tracing. Okay, it's used for computing hidden lines. It's used for doing photorealistic rendering. It's used to calculate clipping. It's used to do silhouette lines. And the list goes on and on. It's also used in mass properties, which we'll talk about on Tuesday. Okay, so mass properties are calculated off of ray tracing. What are the rays and vectors used? Well, it's these. So here is a, a typical scene. You have some light source. You have some viewing eye that's looking at this. You have some surface, that's this arc thing at the bottom. You have some surface that's being rendered. And with that, you end up having four vectors. So you have the, what is referred to as the incident or light vector that's coming from the light source. You have the normal to the surface, and that normal is computed the way we talked about a few weeks ago. Is it that ugly partial differential equation approach to rendering? No, it's, it's used basically central differencing to figure out the normal. It's a little vector in the u direction, a little vector in the v direction about this point p, it crosses the two and it gets a very quick normal which is close enough to the real normal to figure out the normal direction. Then you have an i vector and the last one is the reflectance vector. The reflectance vector has the exact same angle between it and the normal as the um, light vector has with the normal. Okay. And there is another angle between the eye and the reflectance. 
that angle may be zero. It may be that you're looking at it exactly how it's reflecting. And if that's the case, what are you seeing? You're seeing a whole lot of light, and it's pretty hard to really see what's going on. If you're slightly off of that reflectance vector, it's still really bright. Okay, you're seeing a lot of light come your direction. If you're quite a large angle away, then you're seeing kind of less brightness come in your direction. Another thing that we have to talk about is kind of the surface quality or the surface finish. A pretty typical surface finish is 125 micro inches, okay, or 3.2 micrometers. And so this surface, which is a fairly common machine type surface, would have quite a bit of roughness. So the light vectors that are coming in are going to be bouncing all over the place because of the small imperfections, roughness in the surface, as compared to something over here that is 0.05 micrometers or two micro inches. <clears throat> so one of the things that you are going to want to do if you get photorealistic rendering off of the CAD system is make sure that you kind of specify the surface roughness. Now that can be done by mapping a texture onto a perfect surface or a perfect plane. You just go in there and say the, the roughness is this kind of a bumpiness and the bumpiness is related to micro inches or micrometers. <laughs> The next thing you need to do is kind of think about the light material interaction. So if we had kind of a dull surface, if we had a surface that say looked like it came out of a sand casting, okay, when the light hits the surface it's going to bounce all over the place and it's going to give us kind of a dull looking image because the light is just going all over. Okay. If we have kind of a smoother surface, when the light hits it, it's going to want to bounce off normal or have its opposite reflectance vector coming off. And all of those light vectors are going to be very parallel, very much the same direction. There's not going to be a lot of scatter. If you have a surface that is translucent, so you've changed the material to either transparent or translucent, the light's going to want to hit the surface and somehow go through, or partially go through. Okay. All of these kind of things that we're talking about come up in nice dialog boxes. When you go into the rendering thing, it comes up and it says, do you have a surface roughness? Do you have transparency? Do you have translucence? So basically, it's things that you're prompting for. Well, how does ray tracing actually work? Well, the way it works is in the scene that you set up, you have a light source, and that light source throws out rays, and the rays hit objects, and they bounce off of the object, and they bounce off in kind of a controlled way, and any rays that bounce and come back into your, your eyeball, you're able to see pretty clearly what's going on. Well, if that's the way it works kind of in the real world when we're out walking around, how does it work on the computer? Well, it works on the same kind of idea, but instead of it being an eye, you have this screen, okay? You have this 2D image that is sitting there that has to be lit up to look like the, the image that your eye would see. Okay, So you have to kind of do that. And so here's a question for you to consider. Which is the larger problem? 
tracking 